All right, uh, today we'll cover uh, Apache Ant. It's a Java library and also a command line tool that helps with building software. So you can also use uh, Ant with Eclipse. Before I start Ant, um, I want to cover some basics of XML so we can understand Ant. Uh, XML is a markup language. It stands for Extensible Markup Language. It's just like HTML. Uh, HTML is used to display data on the web, but XML is used to describe data or information. And with XML, you write the tags for XML. Here I have a short example for XML. This is known as a prologue for XML. This declares the version of XML and the encoding that is used. This is UTF-8, which is an 8-bit of encoding for ASCII characters that you know of. In XML, each of these is called an element. And you can have elements inside elements. Each element has an end. So this element tag has an ending tag, which starts with a front slash. And inside this element, we have other elements. What we are doing in this particular example is we are describing email. So we have an email group and we have a set of emails. So we have this email right here. And we have another email here. Okay. So inside that email, we have some information about that email. Uh, what do we have here? We have a to, a from, a subject, a message. Inside message, we have a header, a body, and a footer. And we have the message closing tag. So inside this element as well, we have multiple other elements. And um, that's our group, okay? This particular thing over here for an element uh, email is its attribute. So this is how we define attributes for each element. So this element has an attribute called date, which says the date is this. So this, the specification for an XML is not defined, so you define your own XML. And in this case, you pr probably wanted to store some information about some emails, and that's why you describe this information. A uh, few rules and suggestions about email, uh, <laughs> about XML. Uh, the attributes for XML are coded. If you don't code them, it's wrong, it's not valid. And the elements are case sensitive. So you cannot have email and something inside there and then have a small e while you're closing that. So this has to be consistent, okay? So this has to be email. Or this can be email as well. Okay, use attributes for metadata, so mostly don't use dates like this. You can have a group called date and you can have something like date, close date, and then here you can have day, month, and year. Okay, in here you'll have that information. So at generally use attributes for metadata. What is metadata? It is data about data. So for example, if you had an ID for email, uh, you just say email ID one. This ID has nothing to do with email, right? It's just for our use. So we wanted to know something about email saying, okay, this is the first email. That's why we put some data over here, which is the metadata for this email. But date is a valid uh, element for email right 
we might want to know that each email has a date so this you might want to keep it inside rather than making an attribute out of it okay so that's just the short introduction to xml all we need to remember is we have elements and we have nested elements and elements have attributes for now for end okay and um, with end what you do is you just download a zip file and you extract it what i have here is i extracted that to my c drive dev tools folder this is my ant distribution and here i just extracted that file so after that i add it to my path where I have declared a system level variable called ant underscore home which points to that directory and then I have added that to my path okay I just added here somewhere in here so that's what you do and then after that you can go to your command line and if you do ant that's version it will give you the version of the current ant distribution which is 1.9.3 Okay, and after that, let's start with Ant. So I have a small project in Eclipse. It just prints out Hello World, it does nothing more. For an Ant, to build with Ant, what you need to do is you have this build.xml file. Okay, it has to be named build.xml. It's an XML file, so the extension is XML this looks just like the XML that we just saw right and in here we have some uh, some information that helps your ant distribution to build this project so when you build this project you probably want to compile it you will probably want to run it you want to do things like that with it right so here what we have is we have it starts with a project element it has an attribute called name name is hello world so this project's name we're calling it hello world okay and the base directory is dots that is we are starting right over here okay and uh, the current directory which is hello world underscore c out and default is main so default main means if i don't give anything to ant it will uh, run this target okay I'll, I'll talk I'll talk about target just in a bit so it will run this thing um, so that's the default if I don't tell and to do anything and in here I have some properties okay so we are defining this so and knows how to read properties so we are defining these properties ourselves and this properties attribute is source.dir so i'm just saying source directory the value of this is source so this source directory over here is my source dir i am defining that okay it doesn't have to be in this format but i'm saying this source directory i'll refer to that later as src.dir same thing with these the build directory build.dir and for classes directory how i refer to properties is using this dollar sign so i have a dollar sign and then i have open curly braces build.dir and close curly braces and in here i have classes so what i'm saying is for my classes directory i want to go inside build and inside build i want to have a classes directory for my classes directory right so this build.dir will refer to that which will say the value is build and build slash classes is the value for classes dr for jar.dir where i want to put my jar i want it under build slash jar okay so this way i could reuse that i didn't have to type build again and again i just said refer to this so later on if i change this this will work i don't have to change it but multiple places correct so down here we have some targets so in ant we have these things called target so this is just an element this closes right here right and this is a self-closing so we are closing this element right here with a forward slash okay at the end so we don't have to do slash property do you get it so because we don't have any information here all the information is in the attributes right so we it is a self-closing element so we closed it right here 
and here this is not self closing the ending tag is here the opening tag is here we are naming this clean so these are predefined targets that we have to define over here so what we, these are declared in uh, ants distribution so we ant knows how to read this but in here we need to do some things that we define so for clean what i'm saying is delete my build directory so whenever your java whenever eclipse compiles your class uh, classes compiles your uh, files over here it will put it inside the build directory classes right that's what i'm gonna do so what i want to do to clean is i want to clean that i want to delete that directory build directory completely so i don't want this jar i don't want this classes so i want to delete that when i clean it okay and when i compile it what i want to do is i want to make that directory first called classes right and i want to do a java c so java c is just the compiling process that's going on and this is the source directory I want the source directory to be src.dir, which is src, and then the destination directory to be classes.dir. So I want to compile everything inside source, which is my source directory, right? src.dir is src right here. So I want to compile everything under here, and I want that to be under my classes directory. That's my destination directory. So that's what I, wh what I want to do when I compile. And what do I want to do when I jar it? So when I jar it, this depends on compile, meaning, so there is another attribute here called depends, uh, which has the value compile. So what this means is, whenever Ant tries to run this target, jar, depend on this, okay? So run this first, and then run jar. That's what it means. So whenever, when I want to jar the uh, classes, class files, I want to first compile them, right? So I'll compile them first, and then I'll I'll jar them. So um, first, what I'll do is I'll make this directory called jar.dir, which is right here, and then in here I have this destination file, so jar slash and dot project dot name. So and dot project dot name is right here. Okay, so that's my project name. So this this property will find its name over here. So this is my jar directories um, right here, and then here I want the jar to be named hello world dot jar. Got it. So the project name is hello world, which comes out of here, right? And then I have a dot jar. So that's what it names over here. Okay. And then I have a base directory called classes.dir. So my base directory is classes.dir. So I want to jar everything under here, classes, and put it over here, right? So my dest file is that, and my base directory is over there. And I have a manifest. The manifest is uh, gives you some information about the class. So this manifest name is main class, and then uh, the main class is the value is this so this manifest file will be stored on and inside your jar as well okay and this is your jar target now after that i have a run target which depends on jar so if i if i tell ant to run this project it will first go to jar and jar depends on compile so it will go back to compile so it starts at compile it will compile and it will jar and then it will run so what does run do it will call the java command we know the Java command to run the uh, uh, project, right? So we just say Java jar and jar.dir slash ant dot project dot name dot jar fork true fork will fork a new thread. You don't have to worry about this for now. Um, so Java jar will give you this jar directory slash ant dot project name dot jar. So it will run this jar, okay? And we have some other other targets. We just uh, made this uh, for our own sake. So we have a target called clean build. So what this will do is it will clean and jar both. Okay, so we don't have to uh, do both of these targets one by one. Okay, so we'll just do a clean build. And we have a target main, which depends on clean run. Okay, so it will do a clean and then it will do a run if we do main, which is our default, right? So whenever we don't we don't give any thing to end it will run this target which will do a clean and then a run over here 
so what I'll do right here is I'll right click on this build.xml file and I'll go on run as and run as you'll see there is a thing called ant build okay so if I run this and build what it did was it found the build file build file build.xml it cleaned right and it compiled so here it said it deleted the directory first right it compiled it said creating directory this and this will do so there was some kind of warning it threw some warning over there and then it compiled the two source files files that I had uh, it created an empty um, package.info.class and it jarred them it first created a directory called jar under build right because we uh, we had this build directory and then we jar them over here so we have hello world.jar and we run it finally and the run output is hello world and we're done so build successful total time it took was eight seconds so we can also do this from the command line i'm right inside that project in the command line so if we do and clean it will run the clean target okay so it'll it just clean right so if i do and uh, what was the okay i'll do a clean build Okay, so if I do an ant clean build, so clean I had nothing to do because I already deleted the directory, so it didn't do anything, and it compiled the classes, it uh, jarred them, and we're done. And if we do ant run, you know, run depends on jar, and jar depends on compile, so co we started back at compile and we um, did not compile anything we did not jar anything we already have the those and we finally did the run command which outputs hello world and we're done so that's the sh a short interval